Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back in Las Vegas talking to some of the stars of The Strip. And one of the big new shows is Fifty Shades, The Parody, which is on at Bally's in Las Vegas. And the big star of the show is Tatiana Mack. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? You are delicious. Do you mind me saying? I don't mind delicious. I've heard much, much raunchier. (laughs) Well, I could have been raunchy because we've just come out of this Fifty Shades parody. It's a musical. It's outrageous. It's shocking. It was born to be in Vegas, really, wasn't it? I cannot think of something that fits Vegas more quintessentially than Fifty Shades of Parody because you've got um, the racy material. You've got the singing and dancing. um, You have the shirtless guys. And, you know, you have that sort of tongue in cheek fun that Vegas is known for. And we have you, and you bring the glamour to the show, and you are gorgeous. What's it like being attractive? I've never had that feeling. Uh, this is just a lot of makeup, but I hear <laughs> I hear it's very, very convenient to be attractive. Uh, usually I fall down first when I enter a room, right. so I tend to lead with my awkwardness. <laughs> Well, you certainly don't in this show. I mean, there you were, just a girl in San Diego, and then you end up on this stage in Las Vegas. I mean, it's an extraordinary career. I guess you're living the dream to be a Las Vegas headliner in this show. I am still pinching myself. I booked this show and started rehearsals. I moved myself from California to Las Vegas in less than four days' notice. So I had less than 24-hour notice when I was told, hey, can you start rehearsals Monday? And I packed my life in a suitcase, and now... Every night I get to uh, get to be in this wonderful uh, fisting musical. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. This is R18. You wouldn't want to bring your granny to it. When you saw the script, was there a moment when you thought, hang on, this is a little too far? It was... When I read the script, I raised my eyebrow, but it was that first day in rehearsal <laughs> when I was informed that I was going to be in the center of a um, dream ballet with jizz ribbons uh, ribbons represent jazz, if you will, that I w- want, uh, debated bringing my mother. Why didn't they do all that jizz? That would have been a great number. We could have done a parody on Chicago, couldn't we? Uh, I'll make a note and I'll email the director immediately. <laughs> I want some money for that, though, if you put it in. Um, this show <laughs> is basically a 69-minute mockery of the Fifty Shades of Grey. And let's face it, it's not that hard to parody because the book is so silly. And it amazes me how girls have taken this book and they've fallen in love with it. Have they not heard of internet porn? You know what? I think that women like to use their imaginations. So it's kind of, I hate to generalize like that, but I do think that part of the allure of Fifty Shades was that every woman had her own Christian Grey in her mind. And I think we really play with that. That's something that I think that what we do, we really parody that you know, fantasy Christian Grey that every woman had in her mind. Well, actually, this show gives me faith because the real Christian Grey in the book and in the film is this amazing Adonis. And of course, I'm a deeply unattractive man, very, very ugly. And and it sort of makes you feel very insecure. But in this show, you suddenly feel more attractive than you did when you walked in. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? (laughs) I don't know how to respond to that. (laughs) Well, you could deny it. No. You are a deeply attractive man. You are exactly what I imagine when I read the books and see Christian Grey in my mind. There you go. And let's talk about the the fisting scene because that's quite interesting. I mean, when you look out at that crowd, there are some people who are shocked. I mean, that's as vulgar as it can get, really, isn't it? You'd think so, but I look out and I see half the crowd is shocked and half the crowd these women are cheering <laughs> and I the glee in their eyes is just amazing to me do people really do this in real life I mean it's extraordinary they do this all has to come from somewhere you see I'm British and we just don't go in for this sort of thing I'm sure there are those of you that do it's not a strictly American hobby I can say that much about fisting there you go <laughs> I didn't know we'd be talking about this so much today this show is on here at Bally's which of course is one of the most legendary uh, places to perform in Las Vegas for you I mean is this a dream are you living the lifestyle because I mean who knows when these shows open when they close you're here now I mean are you enjoying every second I am certainly enjoying every second. I I live not too far away, so every night before I go to bed, I get to look out over the lights of the Strip. I, I mean, heck, I get to drive to work every day in Las Vegas and see the, you know, everyone on their most wild weekend of their lives, I guess. And it's, it's really, um, you know, it's one of those dreams as a performer. 
It's not uncomfortable, this show, for men, which is great, because it could be. Um, I'm glad that you did that. Some of these sort of female-friendly shows make you kind of feel as if you're not welcome. This is inclusive, not exclusive. Um, it is kind of rude and smutty, but as I wrote in my review, the songs are done really well, because if they weren't, it would kind of flop. It has to be done really well for the parody to be a parody, doesn't it, with these type of shows? I think, in our case, the fact that it's a musical helps that. I think... A musical in and of itself is very, um, it's in kind of an absurd form. And so because we say so true to the form of the musical, it allows there to be some substance to our parody. And it allows us to stretch this joke for 69 minutes that perhaps doesn't seem like it would last that long. Right. Um, It also lets us develop the characters a little bit differently than maybe you'd expect otherwise. And we should say, for those who are wondering, there is no actual sex in this show. This is a comedy. This is a parody. This isn't some vulgar sex show. Nope. My mom was here opening night. Was she? And and she was so happy with it, she came back again. So Did you have a big opening? I'm not going to answer that. (laughs) No, I set you up for that one. I mean, there are some (laughs) songs in this which are incredible. Give us some of the titles of songs in this show. Uh... There's a hole inside of me. <laughs> that needs filling. Yes. And um, then the various reprises of that song. Then there is a... Uh, can, I, can I use the F word? Of course. Then there's I don't make love, parentheses, I fuck, which comes from a real line in the book. A lot of what's one... A lot of the best <laughs> jokes in the entire show come from actual lines in the book. Uh, of course, the Red Room of Pain, d- describing Christian's iconic Red Room of pain and that I think we take in a very different um, in a different <laughs> way than people would expect they're expecting something very ominous and uh, foreboding and we go very Gilbert and Sullivan yeah I mean my idea of a room of pain would be sort of an hour watching Dr. Phil or something like that this is quite different what I loved at the end you do this number and it's sort of a parody of One Day More from Les Miserables there's loads of in gags in this that I'm sure half the audience don't even get it's quite clever isn't it the way they've put the script together I love, we have a Phantom of the Opera parody and we have a Les Miserables parody that it is a a kind of nerve-wracking moment for us because we spend a good two and a half minutes of the song wondering, are they going to get it? Are they going to get it? Will this flop? And there's always at least, you know, that good chunk of the audience that is theater nerds like us and they, those are the ones that are laughing the hardest and it's, it, there's a payoff there. <laughs> You know, the great thing about this show, it's got a beautiful soundtrack to it. It's got a great script and it's tightly performed. How draining is it at this point? I mean, you've been on stage for 69 minutes exactly. Is it a walk in the park to you now or do you still have to really focus and work at it? It, If we're doing it right, it's never a walk in the park because every audience is different and every audience is going to require something different of you. And the second that we stop paying attention to that is when it will get easy, but it's also when it won't be funny anymore. And so, again, this is a 7.30 show. It's pretty early for Vegas. I mean, people don't come out till late. I know tonight you had to work to really get them. It's a Sunday night in Vegas. Let's face it, it's not Saturday. I suppose the nights of the week do matter. The nights of the week do matter. Um, and it's... And it's funny because often our Friday and Saturday audiences are more focused on the partying that's going to happen afterwards. And we get these like Tuesday and Wednesday crowds that are just rearing up for their week and they're ready to see something funny. But I can't say it's necessarily dependent on the day of the week. A lot of times it's just how much they've had to drink first. Right. Welcome to Vegas. (laughs) Is it fun being you at this point? I mean, you're the star of this show and you've got this incredible voice. I mean, we should say that. I mean, you sing these numbers so beltingly. Um, Is the dream for you to go to Broadway or the West End or where is the next goal? It's funny because for the longest time I was saying that my immediate goal was Vegas. And then I got here and I'm like, oh. Oh, now I have to come up with something new. So, uh, of course it's Broadway, of course it's West End. It's, um, I studied musical theater in college, so the second I stop paying that off when I'm 85 uh, is when I, can, it's when I can stop dreaming bigger. Yeah, by the point in which you're too old to do it, you'll probably be able to pay it off and get a gig, won't you? I don't know. I think I'll be really, really engaging when I'm 85, okay? I think you will. And what I'll say about you, Tatiana, I think there's going to be so many character roles for you because you are different and you've got this character about you and this sort of ebullience and and energy. Um, Were you born with that? I guess you can't be trained it. There's something important in knowing what you are good at, knowing what you aren't so good at, and capitalizing on both of those things. 
So I'm, if I'd have known what I was good at, I wouldn't be here sat talking to you. I'd probably be working in the post office or something. Do you know what I mean? Apparently, working in the post office is very, very, very difficult taxing. And you've heard people going postal. Right. I, I think you probably made the right choice. Listen, congratulations on being you. You are delicious. You are fabulous. Tatiana Mack is the big star of this Fifty Shades of Grey parody. It's on at the Ballets in Las Vegas. Come and see it. It's a short show, which is great. And that's what I love about Vegas. They don't have you hanging around all night. Get you in, give a great show, all killer, no filler, and then get you out to party. And that's what Vegas is about, isn't it? I like that. All killer, no filler. But in this case, we have a lot of filler. There you go. Uh, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for filling me in on things like fisting and lots of new things. I've got to go and now Google and research. Uh, I do hope the web people aren't going to be looking at my account. Great to talk to you. Great talking with you. Thank you.